Yo, what's good, boys? Welcome to my update and improvement guide for 2024. You guys absolutely loved the last tips video I made around six months ago and have been begging for a new one ever since. Today, I'll be taking you guys through everything I do to make sure I'm playing my best and constantly improving going to this FNCS. This video is going to take you guys through my aim routine and mechanics routine that I do every single day to become one of the best fighters in the entire world. With that being said, let's hop right into the video. All right, boys. So the first thing I do in this routine is actually go into my brand new mechanics training map. I did make my own mechanics routine that kind of covers everything that I think is valuable and worth your time. So I kind of condense it into not too much stuff so that it's not overwhelming. And this is the map that I've been using on the DL recently until I could like make this video and officially release it. Um, but I pretty much start by going over to this tunnel area. And this kind of all depends on if you've played at all yet on the day and if your hands are warm. If your hands aren't warm, I would recommend going to 1v1 PG. And this is where I'll just rebuild. And I kind of do this for, I mean, I don't really set a time. Literally, just you guys kind of should know when your hands are warm and when they aren't and like how you feel with the game so i mean once your hands start feeling warm and you're like ready to actually play and practice and improve uh that's when i would say to get out of this i normally do that to warm up my hands and then i go back to the lobby and i head straight into the tunnels and these are just really simple peace control tunnels there's no shooting box or, or there's like no shooting bots you kind of just piece your way through these tunnels i'll run through some examples uh they're pretty easy to do honestly they're not like super super advanced this is all just they get they get harder over time like per tunnel but these shouldn't be the most difficult thing if you're already an advanced player if you're kind of a beginner then these are really good to just get in the flow of things and get used to like your build combinations and your keybinds and i really do recommend this map if you guys are either just wanting to improve or like you're switching key binds or anything along those lines i think this map is really good for and i kind of just run through all these tunnels uh i wouldn't recommend spending too much time on these this is literally just another version of free building but i think better in terms of like it actually forces you to do certain build combinations so i mean like when you're free building you can do whatever you want this kind of forces you to learn like situational piece so i kind of just run through this try to get your way through as fast as possible while piecing every single little tile um, and yeah. And I'll go into five. I go through this part, obviously, where the red wall is. I'm gonna go away from that. So I get through there. And I mean, it's not, obviously, depending on your skill level, this can look really advanced or can look really easy. Um, it's all it's all personalized at the end of the day. I mean, if you're in a lower skill bracket per se, I mean, I would recommend starting slower and like just making sure your edits are consistent and like you're doing the timing right. But as you get faster, obviously you could do more stuff. You could start adding like cone flips in like that. You could start just spamming edits like that and just getting your hands really warm. All right, after I do the tunneling, I actually go back into the free build in 1v1 area and I normally change the speed that I'm building on and I actually raise it to like two or 1.75. These 2.5 and 3Xs are really, really fast and I think they're too much to like actually free build on. You can kind of tunnel with them maybe if you're like really good mechanically already, but I think those speeds are too much to free build with. So I kind of stick to the 1.75 or 2X depending on how I'm feeling and just try to get as much stuff down and piece and edit as I can. I mean, obviously you should go based on your skill level. Like this isn't really a set in stone routine to where you have to do this one thing. But I say like, do whatever is comfortable for you. At the end of the day, like improvement is gonna happen no matter what, as long as you're practicing. So don't think that like every single thing I do has to be exactly what you're doing to improve. After free building on my 1.75 or 2X, I always go down to 0.5 and this makes it really, really slow motion. And this is where where I practice all of my over editing. This gets you really good with your timing and consistency. Um, I recommend, even if you're like not super mechanical, I recommend trying to go as fast as you can because that's the only way you're really gonna improve. So do as many edits as you can in such a short period of time to where it becomes mechanically difficult even though you're going super slow. Like, as you'll see, I can do as much as I want here and I'm still gonna end up messing up a little bit sometimes just cause you know, I'm not perfect. But once you do that, you can go up to 0.75X and pretty much do the 
exact same thing. Try to do all the same stuff you were just doing on 0.5, but a little bit quicker. And this should obviously feel harder. There should be less that you can do. I mean, I can still do most stuff and my mechanics are really good, but depending on your skill level, again, it really all depends. Like, I, I don't want you guys to think that all my build combos and everything are exactly what you need to be doing. Just do whatever feels comfortable. And I think a really good thing, a lot of people actually ask me how to come up with kind of like stuff to do when you're free building and how to get more comfortable with your mechanics. Honestly, watch me, watch other players, like other pros and just watch them free build. Like what I would do before I became a pro was literally go into Twitch VODs of people or YouTube videos. And I would just sit there and watch a certain retake that they would do, right? Not even just high ground, just like build combinations. Like for example, if I saw somebody do something like that, I would literally sit there and I would practice doing this all day. And it's just, once you master one certain move, then you can move on to different things and you can start doing like stuff like this. And there, there's so much that you could branch out of. But I recommend when you're initially starting to free build and kind of get your mechanics right, try to focus on single moves at a time. Like try to break it down instead of forcing everything together at once. And that'll make it a lot easier for your brain to kind of comprehend and get used to. And then you'll end up getting really consistent with it. Right, after I'm done free building, I go over to the piece section. There's only four drills here, but they are longer and they have bots that shoot back. So what you're gonna wanna do is kinda make sure you're taking good peaks. That's the main thing that I push for people, like right there. I overpeaked a little bit and got hit. So right here, got uh, overpeaked, got hit. I mean, it's just, they're the most important thing that I don't think people realize and like, I'm not saying I'm the fastest player in the world. Like there's people out there that are full creative warriors that will be faster than me or like more consistent or whatever. But if you're taking bad peaks in a real game, you're gonna get hit and you're gonna lose fights. Like that's why you guys can watch me in a real game a lot of the time. And I can literally just stand on a kid's wall and they can do every edit in the book and I'll still win. And it's because people don't know how to properly peek. So I think this is really, really good. I mean, it's super, super hard to not get hit and you actually have to consciously think about it. And I think that's the most important thing is conscious practice of what you're doing. And that's kind of the key to success. So pretty much all these drills are the exact same in terms of like concept, like you're gonna wanna piece the bot, take a good peek on it, like good right hand peek, don't get hit. And pretty much your goal should be to go through this, not as fast as possible, at least in the beginning. Try to take your time going through the map and just not getting hit. I can go here, make sure I take a good right hand. Don't get hit, go up, take a good right hand. Like your main goal should honestly be to not get hit. You shouldn't worry about just like over piecing everything and going crazy. Like just make sure number one rule, don't get hit, especially in the beginning when you're doing this. As you improve and get faster, obviously it's okay to kind of like loosen up a little bit and try to move really quick, get super PC and like try to think of peaks on the spot that you can do because that'll be closer to like a real game scenario. Like right here, that's like a unique right hand peek off a ramp that a lot of people don't do. And there's so, there's so many different ways for you to approach a situation and not get hit. It's just about knowing every single one of them and knowing when to use it. Then I hop into three, I go through this next section and it's just the same concept over and over. I mean, just different build combinations, getting used to really knowing how to not get hit, knowing what peaks, what angles, like I know, obviously everybody knows this is a good right hand. You won't get hit if you kind of momentum yourself in this top or in the top left corner. But the same thing goes for a peak like this. The same thing goes for a right hand little window like this. The same thing goes for even a peak like this, where you could get the shot off, take the right hand and still not get hit. So I mean, just be experimental with it. Don't become like a super stagnant player in terms of what you do because Especially just over time, people adapt to play styles. And I think that's one of the reasons that I'm such a good fighter is because so many people out there just do the same peaks as each other and everything's like the same. It feels like every fight I get into is the exact same. Everybody does the same thing and there's no uniqueness in people's play styles. So it makes it really easy to just read somebody and get the jump on them. I go to the last piece section, number four, and just do the exact same thing. One thing, if, if you guys can learn one edit from this entire video, I just please learn the ramp edit that I do when you're in a box with somebody. This is like the most OP right hand that people don't understand. Like it's like the it's the least utilized right hand beat that people do. I don't know why. I mean, if you guys watch my videos, you see me spam it all the time. I mean, it's just so OP. I mean, the other thing when you're right handing like this, instead of doing like a normal mongrel classic like this, you can take the right hand, edit the ramp 
ramp like this, so that no matter what they're showing, and like you can't, they can't phase on top of it or anything or get blocked off. There's, there's so many different things you guys have to experiment with. And I mean, you can get it from either playing the game or just watching good fighters. I mean, if you like actually take the time to analyze somebody like myself and like watch every little thing I do and break it down, you'll kind of learn the same concepts, but there's nothing better than just putting it into practice. I, after I finish my peace tunnels, this doesn't really matter the order, but I either go into the aim part or the phase part. I personally love doing the phase section of this map. I think this is the first map that's ever done something like this. And I'm sure you guys, if you watch me, you see me do stuff like this all the time. Pretty much the goal here is to find a way to get in a box, you know, without building. Like you have no mats or you're just trying to finish a fight quick. There, there's a lot of situations that this is useful. And I'm sure if you guys watch me, you guys will know I do this stuff all the time, but you have to pretty much find the timing to where you could run through a wall just like that or run through oh, I messed up see that, that's how you know there's never enough practice like there's there's always room for improvement with stuff like this I mean there's all timing and all different methods to like get in boxes and I would recommend I mean if you guys are really really new to the game and like aren't good at any of this and you can put the ramp behind your head and this makes it way easier you just jump to do that but if you guys are any form of like decent at the game I do recommend practicing this it's a very, it's like it's not even an advanced fighting technique anymore obviously as you can see it's not too difficult but it's super super effective in games and when i go back to the lobby i do the same thing over here but with a floor so this is if you're phasing in from above somebody as you can see i can't get in here if i time it wrong like this you can't get in but you time it right kill the bot. I mean, you guys are going to be able to find it on your own, but I kind of click, I guess, not at the peak of my jump, but once you start falling down on your jump is when I kind of click my mouse. Maybe like a millisecond after you start falling is when you time it. It's, it's all momentum. I mean, you guys will get the hang of it if you practice it. And yeah, super effective. All right, one of the last parts of this routine now is I normally go into the range and I pretty much practice my AR aim. Um, this is kind of not, I mean, AR is not the most important thing if you're a normal player, but as a competitive player, Storm Surge is a really, really, really crucial part of the game. If you don't have good AR in, you're gonna fall behind. So, I mean, you can go through all these. Obviously, short range AR is useful in any type of game, but I do recommend to practicing your AR aim. I, I don't like, there's no people that genuinely practice their AR aim. So if you do, it will set you apart and it may seem boring in the start, but I mean, as long as you get it done, you're gonna be better than cool. All right, so when you're in the hub, I kind of go over here and use this as the hit fire section and pretty much the boss drops down into you. So I'll simply try to flick onto them as quick as I can and as accurately as possible. You could do it with your shotgun to make it easier because it has a wider, or it has like a wider spread. So you're more likely to hit them, but I like doing it with the AR. This gets harder and makes your aim much more precise. Then you can go over here and do the tracer. Uh, I always put this on long. I honestly don't think there's a point of doing it short unless you're practicing SMG tracking, but I always do long and just use my AR. And it's pretty much just tracing the bot, tracking it as well as you can, and getting used to kind of movement while aiming. As you can see, I can't hit the bot because of uh, the good old Fortnite update that added uh, bullet drop on ARs. But this is good to practice that. As you can see, if you just aim a little bit ahead of it, start hitting shots. So, really, really crucial, especially in this chapter where guns are like this now. And yeah, I love this section. After I do that, I go over to the 360 tracer. This is really, really good for SMG practice. Um, kind of, I just stand still. I mean, you could like move around a little bit and get a little movement going, but I just stand still. It makes it much more simple. I mean, it gets it gets the same idea across, but you pretty much just want to track that ball the entire time. Well, I literally don't even click my burst. I just hold left click the entire time and try tracking the ball as well as I can. And lastly, I go over to the orbs, and this is pretty much like a mini Kovac scenario. If you guys know what Kovacs is, I would assume most of you do. It's like a tile friendly with little, little balls, and I try to get some movement going with my AR, just like calm crouch them and move to the sides because it's good practice to kind of get your aim right without standing still and getting headshot sniped, especially with like this season and how OP snipers are. Now, after going through all of that, that's pretty much the entire map. This map is actually fill. Like there's a maximum of two players in the map. So you can go in here with a friend, practice your mechanics together. And then at the end, you can one to MPG. Or you have all the health options. You have the guns. You have all the movement options that kind of let you customize your PG. 
Luigi and practice with each other as, as much as you want. And then I think much more important than the 1v1 PG part is the aim duel section. You kind of load in here with your friend. This wall will drop when somebody else is in here and it's pretty much just an aim duel. You try to, whoever kills each other first wins. And yeah, it's really good to practice your aim on an actual opponent. The next thing I do is actually load into my normal 1v1 map because if I'm really trying to just get a 1v1 in, you know, if you're filling in this map, not everyone's gonna want a 1v1 PG. So I 1v1 PG on my normal 1v1 map. I'll just put the code on the screen and in the description for this as well. For the mechanics map that I'm in, you can also match make right here, but I load into my normal 1v1 map and yeah, I'll see you guys in there. So yeah, this part of my routine is all about uh, fighting actual players. My 1v1 map has all of the updated guns and everything. I like putting it on 175 personally just because I enjoy it more when you can kind of clip people. I mean, theoretically 200 health is better for practice, but I always load in here on 175. And obviously this is where you kind of want to practice all your mechanics that you just worked on and put everything to the test in a real fight. Because at the end of the day, what's the point of having good and consistent mechanics if you don't know how to use them in an actual fight? As you can see, we're also on the, the little Valentine's update for the map right now. It looks kind of clean if you if you ask me. This is something I do every single like, I don't think there's been a single day that I've played the game that I haven't 1v1 somebody. I think it's like the most fundamental part of the game, honestly. I mean, when you think about it and you break down the game itself, I mean, everything becomes a 1v1 and in, like individual skill. And I mean, obviously you'll learn how to like clutch up in 1v2s and stuff like that over time and just playing the game. But realistically, your individual skill is what ends up mattering the most, so. I think one of the ones probably one of the most important things to practice. GG. Just got pooped on. But yeah, I think um, another important thing when it comes to 1v1s, I don't want you guys to 1v1 your friends or 1v1 people that you talk to every day and 1v1 the same people every day. I think number one rule is try to 1v1 somebody that's better than you, even if you lose all the time. If you really want to get better, you should be 1v1 people that are better than you. That's like the number one way to do it. And rule number two, don't 1v1 the same people over and over again. Ready, bad peak in three, two, one. Uh oh. But yeah, uh, that's a big mistake a lot of people make because people have habits. Like, even I have habits. Like, people, you get used to somebody's play style and it's not good to adapt to one person's play style. Then you adapt your fighting style completely on the way somebody else plays. So, you want to be able to get used to a bunch of different people's play styles. That's why, if you guys see me on stream, I always start the stream off by 1v1ing like viewers just because I can play a different person every single time. I mean, a lot of the people that actually fill in this map and like use the matchmaking of my map are actually really good i've learned somehow so i mean if you're looking for pretty good players to like get one you want you don't have like a bunch of friends online but you just use the matchmaking on the map and that has worked pretty consistently All right, boys, the last thing I do in my warm-up routine and my like mechanics routine and before tournaments especially is I hop into the Forever Zone War solo map. There are also duo and trio versions of this, but I prefer the solos just because they give me a better warm-up. Um, but this map is really, really good for just getting your spatial awareness up. I, I do this mainly just before tournaments, but I mean, it's also fun to do it anytime. Definitely get your aim warm, as you can see. You know? I hit my shots in this map, but I mean, I don't know. I think this map is really fun as well as... A bunch of kills, tricks, stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this, this map is probably the biggest helper when it comes. And I got pooped on. No, but I think this this map is definitely the uh, the biggest helper when it comes to actually like fully warming up for a tournament. Um, I don't think it makes you. It's not like a mechanics routine type of map, but I think it is super helpful for getting like warm. All right, let's see if I can get a nuke here. All I need is ten elims in a row. That's one. Sprayed to death. Good job, bro. Alright, that's a free two kills right there. Nice. Pick all the already. I was trying to steal my Elim. This guy's AFK. Put it. Oh my. Wow, that was scary. Five more elims here for the new. Nice. I'm hopping in. Oh, 
wall. Uh oh, I missed. He has an auto. Bro, this guy's so bad, but he's so good because he has an auto. It's so scary. All right, three more for the nuke. Nice. Oh my. Wait, I'm him. Watch, this guy's gonna edit on me. Three, two, one. 120. Dead. We're watching. Peace. Uh oh. New. Wow, I'm in. Yeah, this map is so fun, bro. Like, I don't know. This map, I think, is actually the best warm up before attorney. It's like actually an end game, but there's just so much going on. As you see, I already have 14 nukes on this map. So I'm, I'm like, go. I grinded a little bit, but uh, yeah, good map. And map code will be on the screen, as always. But yeah, with that, that is going to be the end of this tips and tricks video and how to improve guide. If you guys do like these types of videos, I know you guys, of course, love the last one. If you guys like this type of video, make sure to drop it down in the comments and let me know that you guys want to see more. I'm definitely down to just keep making stuff like this if you guys enjoy it and it helps you guys. So, let me know in the comments. All the maps that I used in this video are going to be in the description and you guys will be able to see them on the screen during the video. And yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.